you go. What an intro. No editing required. Ten shitty albums that isn't sent anger. That's the low hanging fruit. We don't do the low hanging fruit here. Uh, me and Jürgen were having a chat in the comments and you know I, you get sick of seeing people just going that's awesome that's awesome haven't heard that yet but it will be awesome you know difficult to use those type of guys as a barometer you know they're very flat and uh, it gets boring and let's be honest you make videos for everyone else's benefit not your own so you should be considering what is entertaining for other people otherwise you could just sit in your own house and talk to yourself about your own records uh, you've got to make things interesting and I would prefer like my favorite album of all time is this Gay Bikers on Acid Stewart to the Gills right I would much prefer to see a video of somebody talking shit about this that had heard it and couldn't understand for the life of them why I enjoy this and decided to get stuck into me about it that is entertaining rather than I would much prefer to see that than someone else just come up and go that's awesome and then put it down again um, no one's going to fall out. That's my favourite album of all time. We will not fall out about whatever, you know, whatever you want to call shit. That's your opinion, but it's more interesting than this just constant pandering to the masses so that you don't get unsubscribed by people. I lost two subscribers from my last video about death metal. Um two death metal albums I guarantee that I don't give a fuck about those two people I don't give a shit they they will if somebody's going to unsub me because of my opinion about an album that's what I want that's exactly what I want them to do get the fuck out of my life because that level of patheticness I'm not going to be good around. You know what I mean? I will upset somebody that's that fucking gentle. So let's crack on with these. After you've watched this video, click the link below. Go and watch Jürgen's video. He beat me to my own thread. It's our thread because he beat me to it. <laughs> so we'll say it's a joint, it's a joint thread. Jürgen picks 10 albums out that he, he thinks are shit. I don't agree with all of his choices, but we're still friends, you know. I, I respect his opinion. A friend of mine said the other day, he's been caught out with quite a few albums because of recommendations in the FC where he's got them. And uh, when, he's, when he's listened to them, he's thought, what the hell? But people have just said, it's awesome, it's awesome, you know. Right, let's get into this. I'm going to get the record out of the way first. I got this last year. Eric were pushing this really hard. It was really up in my face last year. The, the video for Overconfidence. The album featured in the, the son of um, Mike Portnoy. Uh, and this weird kid that's had a shitty upbringing. You know, I mean, fair's fair. And that was the, sto the back story. And that was the reason that got me over the line with this and I bought it and um, it's new metal a new metal album in 2020 you know albeit with a modern take on it um, I was intrigued um, as to what I saw in the video and what I heard him say in an interview and stuff but when I've lived with it for the best part of a year uh, it's not for me but Unfortunately, at the moment, it's only eleven ninety nine on Eurek, so I can't even offload it for a profit. The only thing I can do is pin my hopes on him really raising his profile one way or another in the coming years, and then hopefully the price on this will go through the roof, and I will be able to offload it. Uh, right. 
Alice Cooper Constrictor. I used to think this was one of four Alice Cooper albums that I, I needed to own. I do own all four of them, but three of them I enjoy a lot more than this. When I went back to revisit this, Teenage Frankenstein, and that was kind of the only one I enjoyed. I remember He's Back, The Man Behind The Mask. I think it was off that Jason guy with the hockey mask on. I think it was off that film or something, but I, I'm not into all that, so I have no idea. But the rest of them... They're just mediocre, uh, middle of the road, uninteresting, uninspiring shit. And then you get something like Thrill My Gorilla. I mean, that is just a desperate attempt to try and make words fit together, you know, to rhyme it for a song. That That's piss poor. Um, but when this came out, and I, this was one of the first albums I ever heard in my, you know, 13, so 13, 14. I can be forgiven all these years later for thinking it was good and realising it's not. Another cassette. Little Caesar. It's got nothing at all um, to, to grab you attention wise. It's just a middle of the road, standard as they come, hard rock album. Um, it's as boring as the album cover. I mean, the best thing about this album, this cassette here, is the nice shiny box I've got it in. Uh, didn't, did not care for this back in the day really either, if I'm being honest. I didn't find it humorous. Um, Stone Troopers of Death, uh, um, Speak English or Die, this is the Platinum Edition and when you look at it, you might think, oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? It's actually not. When you see it in, in the flesh, it's like, oh, shit, I think I'd maybe rather have the, the normal version. It's got a load of extra songs. Um, I gravitated towards it back in the day because it was, you know, Nuclear Assault and Anthrax. Um, and I was happy with that, but I've never liked Billy Milano and I didn't like the humour in it. It's got some great guitar tone in there and the mosh riffs and awesome drumming from Charlie, but um, it's, it's not interesting at all. What was that? Um, Dark Throne Soul Side Journey from 1991. I didn't know about this back in the day. Um, it's Dark Throne's death metal album before this changed to a black metal band and with this production it's obvious to me that the um, the production they opted for was better suited to black metal you know my main problem with this album is uh, um, it gets going sometimes but only in very short bursts and then it stops again plodding along and then and then gets going again it's like the the music equivalent of an American football match or like a rugby match that keeps stopping, you know. Release! I fucking hate it when they shout that on rugby matches. Anyway, not into it. I actually prefer Dark Thrones, like crust punk stuff, um, over anything else. Uh, <laughs> the sad thing with this is. It's Nocturnus Thresholds. I love the artwork. I love the cover. I love the colour scheme and all that. The album's quite dull. It, it doesn't do anything very interesting. Standard death metal with some keyboards on. The keyboards are used slightly different to my ears than what they were on the key. The, the keyboards on the first album sound a bit like a ray gun or something and fits with this sci-fi theme. On here, they sound more keyboardy. Um, the production makes it hard to enjoy as well. It's very, very muddy. But, you know, if I reissued this on vinyl and it was shiny enough and all up in my face and, uh, you know, like 100 purple versions and 200 green versions, I couldn't say with a great deal of confidence that I wouldn't pick it up on vinyl. I'll maybe sell that CD and offset the price. Onslaught in Search of Sanity. Um, 
if it starts right there's like a five minute intro that is little more than like the mechanism of a lift, lift shaft working that's how it starts it's like just this hum or whatever it, it's just utter shit for five minutes I used to think the song In Search of Sanity and uh, Welcome to Dying was good uh, there's an ACDC cover of Let There Be Rock which, but the whole album as an album it's dull I never go back to it don't think Steve Grimmett was a great fit much prefer the other guys that had singer for this band over the years this was a very soft um, you know can we crack the mainstream type of sound to me don't like it uh, typo negative bloody kisses from 93 I bought this on the strength of that black number one single which I thought was awesome that video and when I got the album uh, I didn't really stop to consider the the band I'd never heard of the band until that video and I, I ran out and got this album back then and uh, I didn't realise it was going to be as sort of gothic -y and stuff. I don't know why I didn't because obviously when you hear Black Number One that's that is, that's what it's about but I'd, the 20 year old me just didn't stop to think hang on a minute you know the rest of this album could well be bollocks. I just bought it because I was so excited by that song. Um, it's just not my I, I can't even say it's a shit album that's more of a that is just so not my type of music type of album really that's a that's a more accurate uh, analysis of that and I suppose the same can be said for this next album so yeah uh, Paradise Lost Icon I remember buying this on the strength of the True Belief video and um, when I got it home and we went to my mate's house with it and we True Beliefs track 10 and we started listening to it couldn't even be bothered to get right the way through it I don't think I think we just skipped to track 10 my mate put a cassette in we taped that song and I took it back down to the shop and swapped it for Chaos AD which was only slightly better um, and I don't know I think I just picked this up because it was dirt cheap and I wanted to see if I could enjoy it you know these days but I the last time I tried to put it on, which was about sometime in the last year, I just thought, my God, that's mind-numbingly dull. And lastly for this video is Spiritual Beggars, Ad Astra. The guy from this, the singer on here, went on to form Grand Magus, or whatever you call them. Um, the, this thing that, I mean, there's 12 songs on this, 13 songs on this. I like uh, Left Brain Ambassadors, Wonderful World, Angel of Betrayal and Escaping the Fools. I like those songs but that's only a third of the albums so as an album that isn't really enough to say that's a good album and also the production so loud and distorted almost that it, it prevents me from even listening to them songs that I do like. It, it sounds like it's almost ready to pop your speakers or whatever you know I hate the production on it so um, yeah but that's it that's my that's my 10 uh, shitty albums make sure you go over and check Jürgen's video out for his 10 shitty albums and I'd like to see you make um, a video like this yourself you know um, don't worry, we'll all still be your friend. See you later.